Good evening, everybody. This is Dave, the Maverick Beekeeper. Uh, welcome to Gel Cell Chats. Um, again, we're back into the usual surroundings you see here. I'm not actually in jail. I just thought it, I'd mention it because it looks like a jail cell. Um, after I did the uh, Varroa film, I've decided to do a mini series on brood disorders. Um, and I'm going to call it Disease of the Day. Um, and the first one we're going to cover is chalk brood. So chalk brood is quite common. Um, most of you out there would have experienced it at some stage or another. So we're going to have a chat about that from a novice perspective, from someone who's starting it from scratch and what I'm likely to see if I experience this. So that's what we're going to do for this mini series. Again, I'm always open for uh, any discussion or comments that you may have. Again, put them in the comments section below. Um, if you've got anything you think I would find of value to use in the future, then please do. Don't be shy um, because it'll help me in the long run. So enjoy the first of the series, um, Diseases of the Day, Chalk Brood. So the rest of this will be a voiceover from me. Um, I'll bung up a few photographs that I've managed to get. Um, we'll discuss each one of those and things like that. So, happy days. Enjoy. I've taken uh, uh, this information uh, online from the bee unit on uh, chalk brood. Causes of chalk brood. Chalk brood is caused by a fungus Ascosfera apis. When ingested by the larva, it penetrates the gut wall to absorb nutrients. As the spores germinate and multiply, the larva eventually dies of starvation. After a few days of growth, the larva and fungus swells to fills the brood cell where it will eventually harden after a few days to its distinctive mummified appearance. Here it adopts a mottled white and black colour and each chalk brood mummy will produce millions of infective spores which stick to the cells, hive components and adult bees. Some of the typical symptoms will start to appear in early spring as the colony starts to build up its population. Conditions such as damp and cold weather will promote fungal spores. Symptoms of uh, chalk brood include Initially, the dead larva will be covered with a white cotton wool-like growth and may swell to fill the cell taking on its shape. After a time, uh, these will dry out and shrink to give the characteristic mummies that are chalk-like at first turning to a greyish black colour as the fungal fruiting bodies develop. Worker bees uncap the cells of dead larva so the mummies will be clearly visible. You could say it's almost a hygienic act. Shrunken chalk-like mummies in the brood and in and around the hive entrance are always quite obvious. As the condition worsens, infected hives will also show a pepper pot brood pattern. This will be established more than likely from weekly inspections. If mummies are still contained in cap cells when a comb is shaken gently, the mummies may be heard rattling in the cells. So the spreading. Ascosfera apis is highly infectious and can be easily spread between hives through robbing and drifting of drones and of course worker bees. Spores can be transferred between apiaries on contaminated equipment and through the intervention of beekeepers. Treatment. Chalk brood is not usually a serious disease among strong, healthy colonies. However, in smaller colonies or those under stress, for example, suffering heavy varroa infestations, it can become a serious problem. The best method for keeping chalk brood to a minimum is the maintenance of good, strong stock, which appears better able to resist the fungus. Those colonies which are susceptible can be requeened. Also, avoiding damp apiary sites will also help to minimise the effect of chalk brood in colonies. A very interesting article, um, pretty self-explanatory, uh, also combined with the pictures that are already shown.
I hope you enjoyed that um, that small explanation of chalk brood, uh, and you'll have to forgive my um, how can I say pronunciation of the Latin names. If I've made any mistakes, I apologise. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed what I uh, produced today. Again, right at the beginning, as I've said, I'm not an expert. Um, the particular uh, passage I read was from information from the B unit, which is available to uh, to the public to to use anyway. So um, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it just remains me to say that if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, throw a few comments in there, things you don't like, things you want me to include. Uh, I'm all too willing to, to try and help on that. So um, we'll then look forward to the next disease of the day um, and I'll throw that video up in about another week, week and a half or something like that. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Enjoy, stay safe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Cheerio.